Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today I want to talk about resizing your models. So yeah, a lot of models you have an opportunity of modeling one-to-one. -one. Everything inside of SketchUp is one-to-one. -one. There's not like a scale that you work at or anything like that. If you draw something 12 inches, that's a foot, and that's, that's all there is to it. That's how SketchUp has always been intended to work, is that you just model real size. There's a lot of times where personally I will start modeling off a photo or something like that. What's more important to me than actual perfect dimensions is the relative size between the things in the model, right? So, so sculpting, creating the shapes that I need to see, that's more important at that time than what the overall size of the thing is. What I can always come back and do is once I have a complete model or section of a model, I can take that and I can scale it. So this means things like maybe I build a building and it's 1 16th the size it's supposed to be, I can scale it up. Or if I'm making something really small with really tiny details, I can model it much larger and then take it down to size afterwards. The point is, if you don't have every dimension at the beginning, it's okay because you can work relative to the rest and then set dimensions afterwards. This also comes into play when you pull in reference images. If you want a reference image to be the right size, you can actually do that by scaling the image itself too. So um, yeah, so we're gonna spend a little time. I have some sample models that I have from a few live streams and we're just gonna talk about how to scale them. Let's go. All right, so you can see I have three things here. I do have this uh, this firehouse model. I have this, uh, this key we modeled in a live stream and then I have a picture of another firehouse. Actually, I guess this is Firehouse Brewing, so probably not an active firehouse, but still a picture that we might want to scale. All right, so let's talk about this. So with this model in particular, when I started modeling, I was modeling off of a series of images that only showed two sides of the building. So this side and this side are all blank, but uh, it was enough to get me to this point where the building kind of came together. The problem is if I look at uh, a scale figure, this is the reason we include scale figures in your templates is I know this, the top of the head of this, this model right here is approximately human being height. So that means if this human being tried to get walk through this door right here, or even this big garage door, uh, it probably would not go well because there's no way that this is, you know, human size. This is like a dollhouse right now. So what I can do is I can come in and scale. So the way to scale is using this, this right here. This is the tape measure. If I click on the tape measure, when I first click, it is trying right now to drag edges. So the default uh, state that you are in has that little, see a little floating plus sign with little dashes after. It's saying create guide is what it's trying to do right now. So when I click, it's gonna pull away a guide. I can toggle that off down at the bottom. You have an option here. It'll tell you what the, based on your operating system, what the modifier key is to toggle that off. So if in this case, I'm on a Mac. So if I hit option, that little plus goes away. See how I turn that on and off? So I want to turn it off. I don't need that. It doesn't need to be on my screen. All right. So what's going to happen is if I come in here and I scale something, if I go across a thing and say, okay, from here to here should be, I don't know, 48 inches, and I hit enter, I'm gonna get a thing that pops up that says, do you want to resize the model? If I click yes, watch what happens. Okay, stuff moved all over the place. Um, things got weird for some reason, this is over here, this is over here. So what happened is actually the space between these things scaled up as well. So it didn't just make the firehouse bigger, it made my entire model bigger, it blew everything up. So that's why these things moved around. That's why this scaled up because I was on it, but the rest of the things moved around. That's not what I want to do. I'm gonna hit Command Z to put everything back where it was. See how far that moved? If I want to scale just this thing, then the best way to do this is to double click once to enter context. See how everything else grayed out after I did that? Now I can come in here with my uh, uh, tape measure and toggle off that create guide Draw from here to here. 48 looked like it was not quite right. That's probably close to like 36 inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click once, click twice. And what happens when I click twice is it tells me exactly what that dimension is. If you look in the lower right corner, it's gonna tell you that length. It's one foot, one inch and 18, one and one eighth inch, excuse me. So I'm gonna say I want it to be 36 inches and hit enter. 
This time it's going to pop up and say, do you want to resize the active group or component? I would say probably nine times out of 10, you want to resize a group or component and not the entire model. There may be a case where everything is built together to scale and the whole thing is scaled up or down based on it. But anytime you have more than one thing in your model, you're probably going to want to resize that thing and not the whole, whole model. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes. And there we go. My model gets bigger, much more realistically sized to uh, my scale figure there. I can see that, yeah, that seems reasonable. That's a reasonable size for a door to be. Um, we did determine in the live stream that we believe this door was actually for uh, a cart, a horse-drawn fire cart, not the, not the fire engine, because this is a, a very, very old building. All right, so let's keep going. Um, right here, we have this Kiwi model. This whole key is supposed to be three inches from end to end. Obviously, it's bigger than that. So I go about this the exact same way, whether I'm scaling up or scaling down. I'm going to double click to enter. I'm going to grab my tape measure. I'm going to toggle off draw reference. And I'm going to click once at this end. Come down here. Click once at that end. And then I'm going to put in 30 inches and hit enter. Do you want to resize the active group? Yes. And boom, there we go. So that now looks, according to a human-sized reference, much more realistic, right? That, that looks like that could actually be uh, picked up and put in the pocket of our scale figure as opposed to, you know, something they could ride on or something. I don't know. All right. So pretty simple to resize uh, those different, um, those different groups, modeling groups over here, right here, we have an image. This is a little bit different because here there's a couple things going to happen. So one is there's no geometry to snap to. So if I come in here and I want to say, um, say I know that this door right here from here to here is 16 feet. It's 16 foot wide. If I click right here, and I come over here, I don't actually have anything reference to click to, I'm just kind of randomly clicking. That's not bad, but I like to have a thing I can check, I can double check to make sure that my resizing happened correct. So one of the things I will generally do if I'm drawing on a picture is I will put an edge. I will click from here, I will click to here, like that. And now I can resize according to this edge. And afterwards, when the thing resizes, I can check and, and make sure it came out the right size. But I'm not in context right now, right? I'm not inside something. So if I just came in and started rescaling, it's going to again change the whole model based on this. So what I need to do is I need to enter the image to resize it. The problem is you can't. You can double click on an image as many times as you want. It's always going to tell you that it's just an image and you can't go into it. So what I will do is I'll take this edge that's my, my reference and this image, I'm gonna select both of them, right click and make it into a group. Now that it's a group, you can see here it says, it says group, I can double click into that group, so everything else gets grayed out. And now I can come in here and I can say from here to here, snap to that point, 16 feet, hit enter, do you wanna resize the active group, yes. So now just the image resizes and my reference edge resized also. So if I ever wanna come and check, I can click here, hover over the, the end there and look in the lower right corner, it says 16 foot. That means it scaled correctly. And this is now an image that is one to one size that I could model reference off of if I wanted to. So there you go, a couple different ways. Well, it's the same way, but the way to apply scaling to multiple different objects. Scaling up, scaling down, and scaling reference images. I can't think of anything else to add to that. Um, this is kind of an essential way that I go about modeling if I'm modeling off of photos or something like that. I don't worry about the scale or the size. Uh, if all I'm doing is getting, if I have, if I'm working off of a set of plans where I have actual dimensions of everything, of course, in that case, I will go in and, you know, model everything to scale if I have all those numbers right at the beginning for sure. But if I don't, if I'm just working off of an image, just trying to create a reference thing, 
Uh, scale is the last thing on my mind. Does everything look right together? Do the sizes work together? And then once that's all done, then scale the whole thing at once. Um, yeah, give it a shot. Uh, this is a huge thing, especially if you're uploading to 3D Warehouse. A lot of people finish their models, upload it, don't think about it, and you import, do, do something like you end up importing a, a spoon that's longer than a car or something like that. So if you do that, I would appreciate, and anybody who downloads your spoon modeling, good job on the spoon modeling, by the way, will appreciate if you run a quick scale on there and make it the right size before you post it to 3D Warehouse. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Do you do this? Is this something that you didn't know about and you're gonna start doing? Are you rebellious and this is something you didn't know about and you're not gonna do? Let us know that too. So we can keep an eye out for you. Or if you have an idea for a video that you'd like to share with us, put that in the comments too. We like making these videos a lot. We'd like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.